it's time to announce some winners. So I had a giveaway on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter uh, for this book, How to Save Your Child from Ostrich Attacks, Accidental Time Travel, and Anything Else That Might Happen on an Average Tuesday. And the contest was to say your best slash worst story about an encounter with a bird. I'm so excited about these birds, I, uh, I can't even get the words out. And by excited, I mean terrified and traumatized. I have not had a good history with birds, which is why this book contains no less than four survival scenarios involving birds. Besides ostriches, which are so bad they made the cover, uh, it talks about surviving penguin attacks, and it talks about surviving small bird attacks, and it talks about surviving geese attacks. That was the other one. I almost forgot geese, and geese, I think we can all agree, are the worst, not just of all birds, but of all living creatures in general. Like even like you take the worst human beings in history, geese are still probably worse than them. Geese are pretty bad. So we need to uh, we need to respect their awfulness and take it very seriously, which is what I try to do in this book. So anyway, I read through the hundreds and hundreds of replies to this contest. When I put something out like this, I never know what kind of response it's going to get. And uh, in this case, I guess I'm not alone in hating birds or having been wronged by birds. We are all in this together. But one person is in this together and gets a book for their trouble. So I'm going to read through some of my favorites. And uh, there's really no scientific method behind any of this. I just picked the ones they liked. The, one, the winner made me laugh. Um, probably because I'm a terrible human being, so you will likely disagree with my choices, but that's okay. And if you want to see all of the terrible bird stories, they are still up on my timeline on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. And you could easily kill a few afternoons just reading through them all. There are some great stories out there. Here are my favorites. And, uh, you know, I guess you could be honored if you win or maybe just uh, disappointed that your life was bad enough to be featured in this. So that's, uh, there are two ways to look at that, really. So I'm just going to go read through a few of these. I might summarize some of them. Will I sum the, summarize them wrong? Entirely possible. Uh, but that's okay, because we're not going for a complete journalistic accuracy here. Or are we? We are not. All right. So this one comes to me from Amanda. She's on Twitter at at tune to chords. And uh, she said that when she was little... There were geese coming for her. She was with three girls, and the other two took off running, and Amanda did not because she's blind, and her friends left her alone with the geese. Now, I thought geese were as bad as they could possibly be, uh, but being abandoned and not being able to see a goose, I mean, that might be the one scenario where geese somehow found a way to be worse. Uh, that is the stuff of nightmares. I can't even imagine being attacked by an unseen goose. So we're very happy that you survived that. I can see why you hate geese to this day. I'm just reading into that. She didn't actually say she hates geese to this day, but she should hate geese to this day because once again, they are the worst. Then we've got this one here by Joanna Bowman. And she said, she went on a first date, nice dinner, then a walk on the beach. Yay, Florida. But then a seagull pooped in my hair twice, once on the beach, once again at the car. We got married though, so I guess it worked out. So there were, there were really two scenarios of bird disasters that I got over and over again. One was being pooped on and the other was birds stealing your food. Because again, birds are useless creatures and those are really the only two ways they interact with humanity. But I thought this one was special because one, she got pooped on twice on a first date in two different locations, and two, it still ended in a marriage. Like, what was that guy thinking? Is he thinking this, this woman is just incredibly unlucky, or is he thinking she's gotten all of her bad luck out of the way? And if a man can look at you after you've been pooped on by a bird twice and still think you're beautiful, he's a winner. So, Joanna, you definitely made the right call there. All right, this one comes to me from RK. He's at, at send, out your, uh, send Out Your Dead on Twitter. He said, my mom had a parrot that hated me and always tried to bite me. When I was 14, I had braces and my braces got stuck on the carpet. So Bob the parrot saw that I was stuck and came to try and attack me. Thankfully, I got unstuck just in time to avoid the attack. Um, I actually have a story about being attacked by a parrot coming out in a yet-to-be-announced book coming out next year. So I can really sympathize with this one, RK. Parrots are awful. They kind of look like little mini T-Rexes, and uh, they can be me. But I just love that, first of all, you got your braces stuck in a rug. I mean, what are the odds? Well, knowing a 14-year-old, pretty high. What was he doing with his, with his braces down on the rug? Does it even matter? Because we all know this story is real. It's too weird not to be real. Braces stuck on the rug, of course a parrot attacks you. So I am happy you live to tell the tale. Uh, maybe keep your mouth off the rug from now on. 
All right, this one comes to me from uh, KT. It's at Indie Music Nerd on Twitter. Uh, when I was around 12, we had a duck fly down our chimney and chase my baby brother, who was about one at the time, around the house. Mind you, we live in a city and there's absolutely no ponds around us at all. What a classic bird moment. A place a bird has no place business being. A place a bird really has no reasonable access. It's not like you left open the windows or the doors. This duck goes down the chimney. Like, shouldn't there be something in there like a flu or some other mechanism to, to stop it from making it all the way in? And a, a duck is not a small animal. They're, they're on the bigger end of the bird spectrum. This thing made it all the way down the chimney and then has the gall to be mad at you for having your house there in its way and then chases a small child. Again, got the survival guide in here. And actually, actually, there is a section here about a duck pond, but it involves pirates on the duck pond. Uh, full disclosure, some of these survival scenarios take a bit of a left turn, much like everything else I do. All right, here's another one. This one's from Sonia Dagenson on Twitter. You might notice I just, I went, I went through Twitter, then I went through Facebook, or then through it through Instagram, and then through Facebook. So they're kind of clustered together like that. Uh, but here's the story. 1984, uh, MCDs, I assume that's McDonald's, summer job before college, find frozen bird in the drive-thru, put bird in box, uh, bring inside, bird warms up, escapes box, decides food under warming lamps is a great perch, AM rush and lines are long, had to throw out food and start over, bird flapping and mad customers. That uh, is just a classic fast food moment. You're already there, people are people are in a hurry, and you decide to do a good deed and save this bird's life. And how does that bird reward you? By making your life as difficult as possible. I, I, what were these customers thinking? I, I would just love to be the McDonald's customer who's standing there watching a bird flap over all the fries, watching these employees freak out. Everybody's clearly having a terrible day. And they think to themselves, you know what? I'm going to stand here. I'm going to wait for more fries. Like, I think there's a point where you just move on to the next restaurant or maybe check back the next day. And the point where the minimum wage employees are battling a bird over fries is the point where you just cut them some slack and move on. All right. This one comes from Talia on Twitter. It's at DPTalia. I got mugged by an ostrich once. I had taken my nephew to a petting zoo. We were looking at one of the other critters when an ostrich came right up to me and yanked the feed cup right out of my hands. I was picking food pellets out of my bra all day. So I got to admit, I'm kind of partial to ostrich survival stories. I've had some ostrich encounters of my own in my life. I put it right on the cover of the book. So I had to get at least one ostrich story in there. But I just love the fact that it didn't just steal the food. It like spilled the, flu the food all over this person. So they had to pick it out of their clothing for the rest of the day. Classic jerk bird move. This one comes from Judy Olson, at Judy Copywriter, she, and that's on Twitter. He says, I hung bacon rind outside my kitchen window for the cute ickle birds, top flat. A huge seagull gulped it down, string and all, and became loudly, flappingly, and apparently permanently attached to an Edinburgh uh, tenement. Delighted to report that seagulls can vomit. So this one's in here because it just raises so many questions. <laughs> like, Why would you ever have bacon and think, you know who this is good for? A bird. Like, first of all, if there's bacon, you eat it. Like, I only eat meat. Meat is delicious. Meat is meat is the elixir of life. Uh, but even if you're not gonna, you know, eat it, like, who would think a bird would eat bacon? Of all the foods I think to throw out for a bird, bacon doesn't make the list. You know, bread or bread-based products, things with crumbs, things like that. Yeah, okay, maybe a bird will eat that. Bacon? Well, I stand corrected because apparently a seagull will eat it. I love that it was. Our, why, why wasn't the the bacon just like on the the windowsill or something like were you were you fishing for birds I, I feel like it isn't accidental that this bird became stuck uh but you know it's a happy ending a bird threw up any story that ends in bird vomit i guess is a good story all right here we have elaine Gr uh, grogan latrell it's at eg latrell um, and she says my father had taken my daughter to a pond to wash the ducks she was reading and he fell asleep only to be woken by a duck trying to eat his toe now we visit danger duck each year with a hot dog for his efforts so i i got I, this one uh, appealed to me because one of my earliest articles back when i had a blog uh, my wife and i she uh she won a free trip to hawaii for us of course after we had already booked our honeymoon so I couldn't get the money back so we went on a honeymoon one year and then the next year we took this free trip to Hawaii right as we were buying a house so we didn't have any money to spend there it's like the hotel is free the flight is free we just have to go to Hawaii and not spend any money at all uh, it's not the best place in the world to go if you want to not spend money just FYI <laughs> it's a place where a or uh, gallon of orange juice uh, costs like nine dollars because everything has to be flown in or shipped in I don't know why they can't just grow their own orange juice there. But uh, that's that's not the point of this podcast or 
video, whatever I'm doing right now. The, um, the, the point of that story is that when we came back, I wrote an article about it, like I usually do, and I posted it on the website, and the whole thing was about carnivorous ducks. Like, I don't think there was even a duck there that we saw the entire time, but for whatever reason, this entire article became about the premise of carnivorous ducks, which I thought was something I just made up. But thanks to Elaine, I know that it's real. I know that there are ducks out there that will eat at least toes. And if you're sound enough sleeper, maybe it will eat the rest of you. All right, here we go. This one is from Stupid Monkey uh, without the vowels to fit it in there in the Twitter, uh, Twitter name place. She says, well, my brother and I went to an extended, extended family member's farm. My mother encouraged us to go look at the emus. We were standing at the fence looking at them when one decided he was going to bust through the uh, bust the gate down and chase us around the lot, screaming like a banshee. Emus are, I want to say jerks. She used the word stronger than jerks. Uh, that's pretty traumatizing. I've had a lot of things go wrong at family reunions, but being chased by an emu is not one of them. Those birds are big. They're scary. They're kind of pretty, but more importantly, they're kind of ugly. Like, the coloring is pretty, uh, the head is a prehistoric monster, and uh, they should be stopped. All right, here we go. We're getting into some of these. I'm not sure if this is Instagram or Facebook. I think this is Instagram. Uh, this is from Lindsay Corbin. She says, when I was younger, my parents went out and left me with my much older sisters. Our cat caught and brought a bird into the house. It wasn't dead. When she released it, it started flying and dive bombing us. My sisters ran out of the room, slammed and locked the door. They forgot to take me with them. They left me in the room with a trapped and terrified bird that dive bombed me repeatedly until my parents came home and rescued me and got the bird out of the house. To this day, I am afraid of birds. So this one is even more traumatic than the first time I read it. So the first time I read it, I thought, okay, your sister's abandoned. You already had one, one story about abandonment in the face of birds. It's like, and then you got out. I missed the part where she was in that room until her parents came home. How long were you in that room? That's, that's some long extended trauma. Holy cow. Um, you really need this book. Unfortunately, you didn't win. You could still go buy it, but wow, you have more of a reason to hate birds than I do. You got my respect. All right, here is a, here's a great one. This one's from Instagram. Uh, JYPSY711 writes, We had a parakeet named Rocky when I was about 9 or 10. My dad used to let him out of his cage to fly around the house. He used to drink water out of a glass in the sink. One time there was a glass in the sink that had a leftover martini in it. Rocky drank the martini. Then he flew to the floor. Well, maybe flew isn't the right word, but he did get to the floor. Then he tried to fly some more. He ran along the floor in a zigzag pattern as if he was evaded an assassin, furiously flapping his wings. Alas, to no avail. My father thought it was incredibly funny. I, on the other hand, being soft-hearted and a girl, thought it was pitiful. Eventually, my father did pour, pour, put poor Rocky back in his cage to sleep it off. And Rocky did sleep it off. I have no idea whether he had a hangover the next day. I do know he didn't drink water, water out of the sink for quite a while afterwards. So, first of all, I'm surprised a bird learned from its mistakes. But the idea of a drunken parakeet um, dive-bombing through the house, flopping around the floor, fills me with happiness. And I hope it filled that parakeet with happiness, too. That was probably the best day of that parakeet's life. Also, it was probably super confused. Uh, you know, Hand-eye coordination and balance, it's pretty important for most animals, most people. But if you fly through the air, your balance and equilibrium are really important. It's probably a good thing that we don't see many drunk birds than what we do. All right, here's one from Facebook, uh, Sanja Novak. Our rooster was chasing me through the forest all the way home. I ran, uh, ran to the house and told my mother what happened. She went out, took the shovel, and hit the rooster over the head, and then cleaned him up and made a fantastic rooster soup. So this is another one that hits close to home. That book coming out next year that has more personal stories in it, it includes a story about my mom being chased by a rooster growing up. That rooster terrified her and was the bane of her existence. Uh, but she did not have the strong backing of my grandma like you had at your mom. I, I just love the sensibility there. You hit it with a shovel and you eat it. Case closed. Mom sides with the kid. That's just good parenting and good use of resources and probably good cooking too. All right, here's, a, here's another one from Facebook, Stacy Marie. When I was in college, my now husband and I were sitting on the beach and I saw a seagull land nearby with a fish in its beak. I realized that it was a baby shark and I felt sorry for it. I hate seagulls. Good for you. This letter's off to a good start. Uh, you, you have the right sentiment. So I approached the bird to scare it away with the intention of returning the shark to the water. The seagull looked uh, me up and down and swallowed the shark whole. It was the most New Jersey thing I have ever seen in my life. 
So first of all, you're pretty brave to confront a bird, but more importantly, you're pretty brave to confront a bird to rescue a shark. Like, I don't know many people who will go out of their ways to save a shark. There is uh, some shark survival scenarios in here. You can see there's even a shark on the cover. I'm not a huge fan of sharks myself, but I can stay out of the shark's domain. I don't have to go on the water. Birds, I can't stay away from them. They think everything is their domain, and that's the problem. Uh, I just love the boss move of this bird looking you up and down and then swallowing the shark hole. It showed you who is boss, and that is uh, it's upsetting and awe-inspiring at the same time. Here's one. This is the th this is my runner-up. This one, if I wasn't such a bad person, this one probably would have won. It's probably the most exciting story to come out of everything. Um, it's from Olivia Farmer on Facebook. She says, I once was involved in a high-speed jet ski chase with a swan. I apparently rode a little too close to a swan and her babies, who were obscured from my view. Next thing I know, I checked behind me for a boat traffic and was greeted by a giant swan flying full speed behind me, neck completely outstretched, trying to murder me. I circled the lake, screaming, and when I realized the swan was not giving up, I booked it towards our dock, nearly crashed the jet ski into the end of it, jumped off the jet ski, and rolled a parkour style onto the dock. This damn swan chased me all the way up the dock until I was able to grab a kayak paddle from a beach and wield it as a weapon, which finally scared it away. So this story is just incredible. If you saw this in a movie, you'd be like, that would never happen. That's so unrealistic. I love the idea that swans are just as big a jerks as geese. Like we think swans are pretty, so they must be nice, but they're not. All birds are jerks. Remember that. Don't let down your guard. All birds are jerks. And uh, this particular murder bird, I mean, that... Jet skis can go pretty fast, depending on the kind of type you have and the amount of space you go. You're talking like 30, 50, 60 miles an hour. You can really get it up there if you've got a straight stretch of land and a powerful enough engine. And this bird was keeping up with you. That's insane. I also love that there's nobody there to save you. Like you got to the dock and I thought like somebody would be there to help you. No, you were on your own. You had to go get a paddle and defend yourself. Uh, that, is, that is some pretty epic uh, gumption right there. So Olivia, you have my respect. Now, here is the winner. That's from Angela Burnett on Facebook. So you will have a book coming your way, Angela. This book in particular, probably this exact copy. Uh, so I'll be in touch with you about that. But here's what she wrote. Uh, I hit a uh, Cooper Hawk with my kids in the car. I then had to chase it with a cardboard box for 45 minutes, drive it to the wild care place, and pay $30 for them to take it. When they called later to tell me its wing was too broken to save, I had to pretend it was fine. My kids demanded a party for Cooper's recovery. It was then a nightmare trying not to cry and let them know. So, again, is this as dramatic as the swan story? No. But this one made me laugh out loud. This is just life and parenting and birds all in one nutshell. So, first of all, if you hit a bird with your car, it is 100% the bird's fault. Your car has to stay on a very narrow strip of road. You can't really go a lot of different places. The bird has total freedom over the air. We're talking, you know, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 feet straight up of airspace and then in every direction. This bird could go anywhere it wanted to go. And where did it choose to be on that narrow strip of road right in front of you? Then you hit this bird and you chase it down. Hawks are scary. I talk about birds being mean. Hawks have some big old talons on it. Even after you hit that bird with your car, it could have messed you up if it wanted to. And you spent 45 minutes trying to get it in a box. I mean, props to you for even having a box with you in the first place and then being brave enough to chase this bird down. Then the wild care place, after you've done your good deed, they charge you money for it. And then the bird dies anyway, or they put it down and your kids want to celebrate, so you have to throw a party for Cooper after Cooper's dead. So you have to lie to your children. So this, this, this story has everything. It has altruism that backfired. It has lying to your children. It has the evil nature of birds. It has, it has unfair medical bills. This one, this one just ticked all the boxes for me. Um, and that probably makes me bad, but that's okay. This, this one is just, is everything wrong with birds and life in general. So congrats to you, Angela. I will be in touch to get you your copy of the book. If anybody else wants to read this, uh, you don't have to win a contest or be attacked by a bird to do that. You just have to go uh, on the internet, type in the name of it. It's only a thousand, you know, the title's only a thousand words long. Uh, and uh, you can go ahead and get that at your leisure. And maybe it'll help you survive some of these bird attacks or shark attacks or whatever else you have out there. Anyway, thank you for joining me. Thank you guys so much for all these awesome submissions. Uh, I really was entertained by this for hours. So thank you so much for doing that. And I will catch you next time.